What's up everyone, new video. This one's about camera shaker and just doing a simple example on how to use it. And we're gonna make a module script out of it so that way you can use it in your games. And in technical terms, this is called a wrapper for the camera shaker as we'll simplify the process of actually using it. So pretty much what we're gonna do first is actually get the camera shaker. So under the GitHub repository, you can get it here or you can go to the Roblox model and get it. You can get it here, go toolbox, and then under uh, my inventory, which is this second icon here, my models, you can find it in here. Otherwise, uh, if you're like me and you have, I think it's BT Roblox, you can just download the uh, model itself and you can drag that to studio. But essentially, either process, you'll get this camera shaker module. Now, if we have a look at the example slide Nick gives us on his dev form post here, Easy camera shake ported to Roblox. If we just scroll down, we have this example code here. So let's create a local script. This will be test shake. And we're just going to copy and paste that. Let's just for now move that camera shaker inside the local script. We'll do local camera shaker equals require script dot camera shaker. So that is the module we're talking about underneath the script here. Then this is going to create a camera shaker instance. So this dot new, uh, this is about object oriented programming. This is a class. And with that class, we give it some uh, parameters. So we've got render priority and we've got a callback, which is actually the shake. And in this callback here, we've got the camera, um, current camera. I'm just going to change this to use current camera. So if we do that, we have current camera dot frame equals current camera dot frame times shake C frame. I'm going to simplify this to current camera dot frames C frame times equals shake C frame. You can simplify it like that. And then this will start it. So it's going to start shaking it. And then also this one here is a preset for an explosion shake, which if we go inside this presets module here, you can find them here. All right, so now that we're done with that, I'm going to comment out this explosion shake. Actually, I'm going to get rid of it. And we're just going to do the bare bones of this. So let's try play the game with that. We should see our camera shaking a bit. And we load in. All right, so it's doing nothing. Let's go back out. Let's have a look. So if we go back here. Oh, so we actually start the camera shaker, but we don't shake it. So that's what we're missing here. So what we, we actually need to do is do this cam shake, colon. Then we want to either do shake once, start shake, shake, or shake sustain. In our case, I'm going to actually do a uh, shake once. We're going to give it a magnitude. So this is like how high and low it goes. So if I do a magnitude of 10, that is uh, an amplitude of 10. So it will go up 10, then it will go down to zero, go up 10, down to zero. Roughness is how often or frequent the shakes occur. So the higher the magnitude, the larger the shake is, but the roughness determines how quickly the shakes are. So if I do a roughness of like five, that sort of, sort of slow uh, shaking. But if I do something like 50, that's really rough, really quick shaking. So for me, I'm going to do amplitude 10, roughness 5, fade in time, I'm going to do 0 0.1, fade out time, I'm going to do 0 0.5. That's optional. You don't actually have to use these. I'll change it to 0 0.5. And if we run the game now, Roblox doesn't break. You can see that we're spamming out and that's because we're doing a really high amplitude here or it might be roughness so what i'm going to do is actually turn these down so if i do that there we go if you saw it we did a little like rough shake there now it only shook once because uh we did shake once not shake Shake is sustaining, I think, so it keeps playing it. So what we can actually do is set up a keybind. 
So that way, when we press this key button, we can test the shake. So I'm going to use user input service real quick. Let's do input object. If input object dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot f. So this is saying when we press the F key, we want to shake the camera. Now if we go back and do it again, if I press F, we get our shake. Like that. And then what we can also do is you can see our amplitude is a little bit too high. It's sort of stuck in the corner. What I'm going to do is bring the amplitude down and I'm going to put the roughness up. So it's going to shake more frequently, but it's going to shake smaller amounts rather than large values. So if I press F again, there we go. We've got a little bit of shake now. What I might want to do is turn up the amplitude and turn up the roughness a little bit more. So I'll do amplitude of 1.85. We'll do a roughness of one. And there we go. We've got a neat little shake there. And you can you can keep messing around with this. So you can do like explosion related stuff. You can do just like if something's breaking in a mini game, do a camera shake like that. But what we're gonna do is simplify this again so we can get rid of this extra code up here. And I'm going to make a module script. I'm going to call this camera shaker wrapper. I'm going to put this camera shaker inside that. I capitalize the M here. And we're going to simplify this process by putting this function here. We're going to put three dots. So that's pretty much saying any arguments here, which is going to pass it through to whatever we want. We're going to move these two values up here. So if we recall, this is the camera shaker module, which is inside this other module script. We've got the current worker, our current camera that we're using in the game. This is client side only as well. So if you try require this on the server, it will error. We've got our camera shaker class. Uh, don't worry about this enum value here. This is a callback function to actually make it shake as well. And then right here in our shake once, we're just going to do cam shake, shake once, dot, dot, dot. And that's our simplified module. Now, all we have to do, or oh, let me grab this and put this here as well. Now, all we have to do is just run this module shake once. If I go here, I do camera shaker wrapper, script.parent.camera shaker wrapper. So that could be in like replicated storage under the modules folder. We're going to do camera shaker wrapper, shake once, and that's all we have to do code wise. So, in a large moveset, so if you have multiple abilities, having it in one line is much nicer, neat and concise. And in our case, I need to actually, for the time being, let me put that in replicated storage and I'll require it there. So, local replicated storage, game get service replicated storage. Replica storage dot camera shaker wrapper. So pretty much every any time we want to run this camera shaker, we just do that single line of code only, and that's everywhere that's using this module. We don't actually have to do uh, any of this up here again, since it's already done. And then you can also hook up the other methods if you do need them. But essentially, um, that's all we need to do. And that's our camera shaker. So if I press F again, it's going to function the same. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this was an easy tutorial on how to set up a simple module for it and use the camera shaker itself. Uh, if you want to do it with abilities and all of that, usually you have a distance between where the ability hit and where your character is. So you can use that to change the amplitude and the roughness. You can explore that yourself though. If you do need help, just comment down below and I'll help you out via the comments. But apart from that, yeah, I'll see you in the next video or the Udemy course if I get that done.